ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special episode of the Division Z podcast. My name is Jason. And I'm Kay Cosmic. Today, we are joined by a special guest. Go a ahead and introduce guest, yes. yourself. <laughs> Hi, folks. I'm Dave Boat. Well, there we go. Dave Boat, a.k.a. the voice of Samuel Stulinger in Call of Duty Zombies. <laughs> First of all, I got to say. Who told you that? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it already. Oh, oh. Love to so hear good. it, man. I mean, first of all, I just got to say a huge thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. I mean, Same here. Dave, Dave's a really awesome guy. For those of you who don't know, uh, Dave does voiceover classes with VoiceCaster. I would highly recommend taking great. the class because I took the class, learned a lot, had a great time, and uh, Dave was a wonderful teacher. So, uh, wow. you know, Thanks, I just want to say a huge thank you to Dave for taking some time out of his busy schedule to come on the podcast. It is my great pleasure and honor to be here, Jason. It's a, a, a wonderful pleasure. Thanks. All right, man. Well, we do have a few questions for you, you know, because I figured as much, you know, this is a podcast after <laughs> this all. This is a podcast. Absolutely. Uh, so the one question now for those of, you know, for those in the community who might not know how, you know, some of this process works, you know, how, how did you g get the role of Stuhlinger? How were you able to book that role? Well, I auditioned for it like I do for, uh, for most roles. Um, and Typical uh, uh, procedure is uh, I have an agent here in Los Angeles. I have another one actually up in San Francisco, but this was cast through my um, Los Angeles agency, CESD. Wonderful folks. Shout out to them. Uh, and um, yeah, I was given copy. I, the actual audition itself, boy, if I had thought of it, it's probably on another hard drive that I don't have access to right now, but I, I might even actually have the original uh, audition for that. Wow. Uh, maybe I can, you know what I can maybe do if I can fish it up, I'll send it to you and you can insert it here. Hey, uh, that would be, awesome. that'd be very really cool. That. Thank you. And you can assume that if you're not hearing it right now or have just heard it, then I couldn't find it. But, uh, in any event of, you know, I got a little breakdown on what the character was about, uh, the, um, the parameters of the game and, you know. Some, a little context, a little direction. I, I can't remember the specifics too much. It was several years ago, but uh, yeah, I just submitted and, and you know, they, I'm sure that in the breakdown, they gave some sort of description as a paranoid CIA guy <laughs> who's always looking over his shoulder and, you know, just <laughs> suspicious of everything and kind of crazy. Yes. And I don't know if they included the fact, but they might have included may or may not like human flesh. So yes, you know. <laughs> that is a, that is a detail that I know everyone in the everyone in, I, I was going to say everyone in the audience there really really is an audience but everyone who's watching at home I think knows the yeah. detail all too well of uh, <coughs> the flesh. Uh, eating habits uh, yes yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. what did they tell you <laughs> oh yes. yeah no uh, the um, uh, so yeah I just I just went with instinct of paranoid hyper energy looking over his shoulder sort of uh, uh, you know nervous. Conspiracy theorists and the picture of him, he looked a little high strung as well. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> yeah, he's he's wound a little tight. He's got kind of that military haircut sort of thing going on, and he's got his his shorts and his um uh his glasses on just so and um yeah, he looks like he's perpetually sweating. Yeah, yeah he, fit, he fits that archetype. He fits the uh, yeah. the the kind of stereotypical, you know, tinfoil hat kind of. A, yeah, kind of power, a constantly sure. powered, like you were saying. Oh, and I love that exactly. And they let me actually riff quite a bit on that, uh, as far as the, uh, the 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 level of craziness and paranoia uh, mm -hmm. during the sessions. They let me. That was one of the great things about doing the character. They let me you know, improvise a little bit here and there mm. or, or play with the script a little bit to uh, That's good. Suit, suit with, you know, whatever I came up with. That's great. That's mm -hmm. awesome. I mean, I guess that also kind of, you kind of answered the second question I was going to ask as well. You know, how, because for voice actors, it's really important to find that voice for a character. So, yeah. you know, that kind of ties into that question of, you know, how did you find the voice for the character being super high strung and, you know, looking over your shoulder kind of energy? Well, the energy wasn't too tough. Uh, you just, you know, I, you know, it's a muscle tension sort of thing, and and just out looking around, uh, attitude of uh, I've I've been online enough to uh, recognize a, <laughs> a conspiracy <laughs> theorist when I see, hear, or read one. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I, I've always, it's good comic fodder 
<laughs> you know, yeah. it's a good little comic premise. So I immediately started to have fun with it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of just my natural instinct. And it, you know, it's mostly, I, I mean, I didn't change my voice much at all. Uh, I just changed my general energy level and put mm -hmm. myself in a panic most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was a very strenuous set of sessions to do any of the sessions with Stillinger were pretty intense. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because oh, he's, he's quite loud, isn't he? A bit? <laughs> he? He can be. Yeah, yeah. And there was a, I did a there were a couple of times where I did like two days in a row of that. Wow. Of like several hours, mm -hmm. <laughs> and. You know, uh, he can wear me out pretty quickly, as I, I'm sure he can wear out some of the fans as well. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I know it, it's a, a character like that. A character like Stillinger is uh, um, kind of like licorice, you know. Mm -hmm. people. Some people don't like licorice, but the ones who like licorice really like licorice. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I mean, here's the yeah. thing, right? I mean, Stillinger is such a unique character i think absolutely and, yeah. you know, from from the moment you you load into a map like transit or bear buried or something you immediately hear that that character you know it's an iconic voice you know it's you know you know it's something that's going to stick with you throughout the map because oh mm. yeah that's the crazy guy oh that's the conspiracy yeah. that's the guy. cheese exactly <laughs> i need more cheese <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah and uh, that's essentially me you know like let's go we're late for the show or like oh i forgot my keys oh damn it you know, mm -hmm. so it's it's my natural speaking voice, but just amped up, and you know it rises a little bit mm -hmm. uh, with the um, pressing of the diaphragm, yelling a bit more. Everybody's voice gets a bit higher in pitch, yeah. with the excitement. So um, my natural lower resonance, and some of the you know the uh, the quieter moments, if you could call that, that when he's yeah. you know when he's happy or something like that, he's like yeah, you know he's got that attitude still, but. He's uh, he's still down here a little bit, you know. He oh like yeah. He mum mumble to himself a little bit. Uh, it looks like a good gun. I don't think I should go any further when I am right here. You know, <laughs> it's like yeah, he he just everything is ramping up. You know, oh yeah. If he's quiet. It's only for a moment, <laughs> and uh, he's he's bound to get excited very quickly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, you know, it, it, there's also. You know, we're we're going along with these questions. Everything's tying into each other, which is great here. <laughs> which um. The next thing would be, I know a lot of people watching at home are thinking the mm. exact same thing. Can you, if, if, if you remember one of the lines from Stuhlinger, can you give the audience an example of like some, oh. some crazy Stuhlinger line that you may or may oh, not boy. remember? We'd love to hear it. Um... God, oh, it's if, like everybody... if you got a paraphrase, no worries. <laughs> okay, then I'll go back to the cheese. Uh, in fact, I added that on. Uh, oh, really? You know, like, I, I need more. I need because they were separate lines about cheese. We need more cheese, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, or we need. More, I need more. We need more bullets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then I threw it and cheese. We also need cheese because it was just a call back to needing the cheese. Mm -hmm. Cheese. We need cheese. Bullets and cheese! Oh, God! These things are ugly! Oh my God! Oh my God, look! Oh! Let me off the bus! Let me off! No, no, no! Close the door! Close the door! <laughs> I, love, I that. love that! That's it's amazing! So good. Right? That right? was amazing! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just sort of put myself back on the bus again, and it's like, all right, open the door! Close the door! Close the door! Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And then they, we had that wacky, uh, the wacky driver as well. Oh, yeah. Ted. Ted, the bus, Ted, Ted, the bus driver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had a few interactions. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Hey, the, the fans, the fans definitely uh, have a love hate relationship with that bus as well. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously, that was amazing. Great work. Um, Thank you. And, mm -hmm. you know, the other thing is, too, you know, with that great work, there's so many people behind the scenes that work on that great oh, sure. work as well. So, oh, yeah. Could you explain your experience, you know, working with Treyarch, you know, at Treyarch, you know, working with people like Jason Blundell, Craig Houston, mm -hmm. and, you know, some of those zombies guys, you know, how, what are they like? You know, how, how is it, you know, with the process with them? They are so great. Um, we, um, they understood what I was doing. I think that's why they hired me. They, 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 we had a simpatico, you know, they said, <laughs> oh yeah, this is our guy. Uh, and I felt immediately right at home and I, Above anything else, any good session is, I if if I if I'm feeling connected, uh, really connected, I'm trying to entertain the people in the booth, and if it's a if there's a comedic angle that I can throw into it, if I can make them laugh, unexpectedly, like 
either like how I read the line or adding something to the line, uh, you know, a little interjection or a story or something. I just sort of keep the energy up and keep it rolling and sort of just work the room. And, and they're, a great, they're a great audience. They're really sharp. They know how to get the best out of any performer, I'm sure. But they, you know, working with a live wire like myself, <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it's kind of like herding cats, but, uh, you know, they'd have to steer me back on course here. And there's like, OK, hmm. we're, let's get back to work here. <laughs> That's enough stories about your ill spent youth. Let's uh, <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's get back to work. And, um, you know, I, I felt, always felt comfortable. Just stopping and say, hey, you know what, I have one more. It's a little different, but you say, yeah, absolutely. We'll go back to it and we'll roll and we'll do it again. And. They can take it or leave it, but they let me do it. You know, nice. it's like, hey, you know, they let me throw out an idea here or there. And that sort of interaction, you don't always get that. I mean, it, not for better or for worse. I mean, some people are very clear about what they want. Oh, they want, specific. Yeah. yeah, it's as written and it's, and with video games, you're sort of under the gun too, to like, there are, well, it's lesser and lesser a case, but coming up through the years, there is a, uh, 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 a memory uh, uh, mm. limitation. So uh, they like it faster and shorter, <laughs> you know, most of the mm -hmm. time. So when you're adding a, a, a sentence or, a, 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 you know, a, an elongated vowel or something here or there, and they're going, mm, okay, yeah, can you tighten that up or just you know, make it a <laughs> yeah. little shorter, faster? Can you do that just like that, only much faster? Uh, so um, they're... <laughs> They're under the gun, but if they recognize something that's good, they'll use it. They'll say like, "Yeah, we'll make, we'll find a way to make it work." You know, it's uh, so they're they're great. All of them were just so much fun to work with, and just yeah. just such a great experience. I mean, I bet. I mean, these you know, mm -hmm. everyone over at Treyarch, you know, the the, the amount of story creativity that these people have with, you know, the, the, these outlandish themes and there's all this craziness that it, it really. How do how do I put this? It's it's one of those things where it, because it's so otherworldly, you know, mm -hmm. getting getting it to page, getting it to screen on on a game like this, and getting the right talent to do so, I can mm -hmm. imagine is just one of the one of the craziest, but also blissful processes at the same oh, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the yeah. bliss comes in the doing and when you're done. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, but getting it getting it to coalesce, you know, getting it all the the, the uh, disparate parts to fit together and there are so many levels when you're dealing with a game as big as this uh uh you know there are so many hoops to jump through and mm -hmm. scripts mm -hmm. to get written and then okayed and then rewritten uh or you know at least amended uh yeah. there it's it's a it's a grind those those folks work really hard <laughs> you know yeah. they would come in sometimes if it was a morning session you know they'd look like well You've been up all night having to, yeah, I had to finish the script. You know, <laughs> so we, it was a rewrite, so we had to do this. And, you know, they might have gotten two hours of sleep and then had to drive into Santa Monica and then have to deal with me for four hours. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which would then, I guess, would be a follow up question to, you know, were there a, t where like how many rewrites were there? Was like every day was a rewrite? Every, like, oh, I don't, I, you you know, know. honestly, I don't know, but occasionally, I mean, not so much rewrites. I mean, they're always rewrites. You know, they're, they're always trying to perfect and and and, and getting change the, the line a little here and there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, generally, what I would get is all okayed. Mm. Um, what they would occasionally have are pickups. It's like, mm. yeah, this doesn't jibe with this part of the story, so we have to insert this line or this word. Uh, we remove this, and you'll be saying this now. Or this was a little too big for the context of this line, so we want you to be a little more understated here. That's a relative thing with Stuhlinger, <laughs> you know. <laughs> understated Stuhlinger is, you know, top of the lungs for pretty much any other character. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, th there can be little changes here and there. Um, and but you know, if if they did like something I added or changed a little bit, they would they would actually just rewrite it right there. They need it to mm. be verbatim for when they send it to editors. I so see. if I if I change what's on the script, they need to change that uh, in the uh, the script itself. So they'll go into the script. I see. Yeah. Interesting. That's very interesting. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, with with um, I, there's got to be hundreds of voice lines that haven't seen oh, the yeah. light of day. 
Oh, I'm sure. I mean, yeah. you know, that the amount of, you know, with, with, you know, picking up a weapon, picking up a max ammo, picking even the up little things, things like exactly. That, yeah. You know, yeah. there's, yeah. there's gotta be different little iterations of that that nobody oh, has sure. heard ever. And, oh yeah. They have the a library. Yeah. They would absolutely err on the side of too many. Yeah. You know, uh, and just pick and choose what they like and also takes, you know, just like, you know, generally we'd go through line by line and I, you know, I'd be directed like, okay, so-and-so says so-and-so such and such to you, uh, you are at such and such a location and here's what's going on. This is the level we need it at. Um, and go. You know, and I'm seeing it the line for the first time. I'm reading it. If if you were to hear the recording, uh, a lot. You know, I, sometimes I get scripts ahead of time. Most times I don't, but I'm usually seeing it for the first time, uh, like right at the session. Mm, you know, wow. and it's up on it's up on a video screen at least for these. And I was, it's like okay, when am I seeing it? When am I seeing it? When am I seeing it? Okay, and then and, you know, I'd read through it to myself, and then you know give a performance and then the, quite often the second especially if it was a longer section like several sentences like a paragraph or something it would smooth out like the second time would be better because mm -hmm. i understand it a little bit better and you're like oh yeah. okay i can hit that or maybe and they and they would give me the uh the free reign at least sometimes to like okay if you, if you feel like you didn't nail it on the second one then just stop when you feel like you have it I see. You know, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you can do better, we're going to trust your judgment. Go ahead. And if we feel like we've absolutely got it, we'll interject and say, oh, we got it. On to the next one. I mean, it sounds like, you know, there's a lot of creative freedom working with Treyarch and working with a lot of these guys. I mean, this that's, mm. that sounds awesome. I mean, that's a good thing. It's fun. It, I mean, it really makes you feel a part of it as opposed to just you know um, being there and doing the voice like you, yeah you have saying, oh actually yeah. i think this might sound a, a little bit let's give it a try sort of yeah thing. it's create creative input you know yeah. uh some are like i said more keen on that than others and mm -hmm. i try to read the room with that i don't try and press that on anybody i always ask permission um uh unless it becomes uh, just a given like hey this is how we work uh -huh. and uh uh you know well i'll i'll read a few things and if I feel I have it, uh, I don't have it. I'll I'll give you another one until I until I feel I get it, or if I if I feel I can give you a better one, then I'll do that. I'll tell you. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's awesome. Thank you for sharing yeah. your experience at Treyarch. I mean, I know hey, I know a lot cool of people input. at home are going to be like, "Whoa, I wish yeah. I could do what this guy does." Like, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? I mean, hey, the world of voice acting is wonderful, though. I mean, it's yeah. it's one of those, you know liberating feelings that you can be a character that extends past the boundaries of human limitation. I mean, it's, Oh, absolutely. It's amazing. Yeah. And even if you are a human like Stuhlinger, you know, it's, it's past human limitation because you got his, 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 his know, brain well, buddy is talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, Rick Toffin. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got, well, I got to turn the tables on him, uh, in the previous iteration. Yes. Where, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They let me, <laughs> yeah. they let me go off there quite a bit. Uh, Cause that was, I was, I was mm. sort of gleeful throughout the whole thing of just mm -hmm. how happy I was that I get to play with this. Uh, what was the line? Ain't that a kick in the dick? Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I think I made that up. Oh, uh, nice. Spot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need yeah. to ask yeah. after playing him in black ops two, obviously Stoolinger, mm -hmm. and the story kind of, ending because they're what to go off a different direction for a little while and then them asking you to come back to black ops Four and do still how how did that make you feel were you happy to come back and do them? was there a little bit of pressure perhaps, oh absolutely or? it's flattering it's like mm. oh man they care enough to like i mean maybe they hadn't even planned to do it but you know there was uh some sort of uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh interest that was expressed mm -hmm. either within the writing uh room or uh maybe the fandom i don't know quite how that all that works but they asked me back and uh I was sort of pulled in, I think, towards the end of production with that part of the storyline mm -hmm. with all those Easter eggs and what have you. Oh, yes. Uh, and that was all done in one session because uh, wow. there wasn't that much material. Um, but it was it was really fun uh, cause mm. just because it flipped the it flipped the, the script. script. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I uh, uh, I got to ju they just said, you know, do what you do. You know, uh, <laughs> we have lines here. Play with them. Do whatever you need to do. Mm hmm. So yeah, that's where the 
I, I, when I, <laughs> that was one of those moments where I was, tr again, just trying to entertain the room where yeah. I was sort of on a roll and people were really enjoying what I was doing. And uh, when, uh, when I discovered like, oh, wait, I'm inside your head. And I crack up. Uh, ain't that a kick in the dick? That, that I, I could see on the other side of the glass. Yeah. I couldn't hear them, but they're like, you know, falling out of their chairs. I have to <laughs> like, say that's that there is actually one of my favorite lines. I think from him. I I remember hearing the audio for the first cut thing. I was on YouTube and uh, Sam McSwain during Black Ops War. What? Because I I didn't believe it at first. You know, I was like, it doesn't. You know, and I listened to it. I was like, wow, that is great. I'm glad uh, they did that. that oh, that's you know, so and, much more to the to the map and the, the characters in it as well and again it, it you know it just sort of came out of me and i thought at the moment it's like oh well they're not going to use that i was just doing it to make them laugh <laughs> yeah uh, i didn't think like yeah i don't know what the language parameters are in this game exactly mm -hmm. but yeah that's crossing the line for some people <laughs> but it's not you know an f-bomb or something like that so it's like <laughs> eh, who knows maybe they'll use it i wasn't thinking in those terms i was just trying to make them laugh yeah and uh and make myself laugh i thought it was funny yeah there you <laughs> so go. i said it yeah yeah call of yeah. duty zombies is definitely one of those uh types of things where they're the language parameter it it, it doesn't exist <laughs> yeah uh, nah, it, it definitely could, doesn't exist no. <laughs> where, i mean everyone's you know screaming f-bombs at the top of their lungs and characters like yeah, i vaguely Dempsey recall and, doing a few of those yeah oh yeah. yes <laughs> It's always, um, I mean, it's always a fun time listening to some of the the, the, the creative language you could say. Yes, uh, exactly. Especially, <laughs> especially with this game. I mean, <laughs> it's great. You know, my only my only thing is, I wish we saw more of the uh, of the Victus crew, which is that crew Absolutely. that, that Stuhlinger's all a part of. And right. you know, I, I guess it would be, you know, if there was an opportunity for Stuhlinger to come back, would you reprise your role? Oh my God! In a second. I mean, if they asked me, sure, absolutely. I mean, it's it's so much fun, and it'd be one of those things where, like, I, I just couldn't wait to get in the booth. Not that oh. I don't have that attitude every time, but it's like, oh no, for this character, you know, yeah, you, you you'd be excited because I it's possible. Up, yeah, you could come back because hey. they didn't they didn't kill him off on screen in a sense, so he could no. still, you, you know, yeah. he, he he could be there. He, he yeah. could come back. You know, you know it's, it's definitely uh, possible. He, he's, I mean, the spirit world exists in, in mm -hmm. that realm, so. Who knows? Yeah, and you know? <laughs> yeah, the next Call of Duty game where we're traveling deeper into the uh, the dark ether, and we're gonna learn more about the the spiritual and and demonic nature of that dimension. So, you know, I guess suppose I, I suppose I mean, anything is possible, right? Any anything is possible. Stones you know? are coming back as a demon. That would be interesting. <laughs> oh mercy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he's, he's certainly got a, he's got a dark edge to him. Oh yes. Uh, I think I, I always found him as just kind of being a lovable innocent in his own way too. He's True. just crazy. He's just crazy and a little simple. He's a little too focused. Oh yes. You know? <laughs> Everything's sort of black and white to him. So oh, yeah. how does this, how does this serve me? And, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, what, what did I get for it? <laughs> yeah. Where, where can I get bullets and cheese? So <laughs> exactly. And where, where, can much, we, where can you uncover the next conspiracy? Exactly. What, what else does a man need? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, everybody out there knows you in the zombies community as Stuhlinger. But, you know, what are some other roles that you've done that people might recognize you in? Oh, boy. Uh, in, the, in the video game realm? or Video just game in general? realm? Just in general. In general. Yeah, people yeah, well, to recognize yeah. you where, you're, oh, where you do boy. some acting. Uh, oh boy, I'm, 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 <laughs> give me a moment. Um, oh, uh, on Family Guy, whenever uh, Stewie's um, uh, uh, favorite buddy, um, uh, Rupert, mm. it, it speaks in his fantasies, that's me. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, oh his my teddy god. Bear. <laughs> yeah. I, I can hear it now as well. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. That, that's my softer voice. <laughs> yeah, just sort of talking like this. Oh, hey, Stewie. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, yeah that was, that's, good. that's my only recurring character on that show. I've done a few peripheral things as well. Mm. Uh, you know, cutaways and, and what have oh, you. Yeah. All kinds of wild stuff. Um, I was on The Sims for a number of years as oh, the, wow. chief, the chief male Sim. Um, that was Sims 2, and then they did a re-record of one of the other games for a different platform, and then of course all the the um, uh, the add-ons. Uh, what, mm. what do you call them? The um, expansion packs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DLC um, and all that. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, uh, all of those. And then I did, I did all the main male voices on a game, another Sims game called The Herbs, hmm. which was which kind of fun. Uh, that was all character stuff. That was crazy. Uh, yeah, and those those were eight hour days. <laughs> those were yeah, Quite that was that, yeah. The Sims was a crazy gig. I mean, that was speaking simlish uh you know there's no script yeah at all and yeah. we're working to picture and, and time and movement and having to you know like stick figure sort of rough animation that we're working to and yeah it's beep, 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 and you have to make your actions fit into that and then it goes over to your female counterpart which was uh um zoe galvez a really uh, mm. wonderful actor and improviser in the bay area um and uh then it'd be back you know we do like 12 takes sometimes oh, of each yeah, one for sure oh yeah i mean and yeah it's uh that, and then your brain you know you're making it up you can't it has to sound like a language and you have to get the intent across uh it uh, I, my brain would be so <laughs> spent by the end of the day and i <laughs> I, I couldn't read, you know, it's like, uh, everything's just to lie stressed. down. Oh, yeah. Just close everything the blinds. Everything is in sim language. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like having a regular conversation. It really does. Wow. You are accessing and stressing uh, a particular part of the brain that you're not usually that in touch with. I can, I mean, yeah, it's, I can imagine it, there. Yeah. Yeah. That was, anyways, that was a fun one. Wow. Um, oh, I just did a, a great, um, uh, uh, had the privilege of... Um, working on Sam and Max, uh, uh, the right, uh, yeah. uh, virtual reality game uh, they just did uh, as Max. As Max. <laughs> you know, the mm, oh boy. Yeah, he, he's got a saucy too. <laughs> you know, he's, uh, he's <laughs> got a little bit of an attitude and it's kind of high strung. He's, he's not quite Stullinger, uh, Stullinger, Stullinger. You know, I never got it right because I've heard <laughs> five different pronunciations there and I can't even remember how they pronounced you, it in the studio. You know, the, the, the community <laughs> doesn't quite know how to pronounce no, it either. <laughs> I say, I say Stullinger. Yeah, that's mm. kind of, that's kind of, I think what I lean on as yeah. well, Stullinger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I would yeah, I refer to myself as Stu on a, a once in a uh, while. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Old yeah. well, good old Stu. Um, uh, so um, yeah, Sam and Max really, really, and boy, awesome. also, uh, talk about great folks to work with. Uh, um, uh, Jay, uh, um, Jason, not Jason, uh, Julian Kwasniewski uh, hmm. up in the Bay Area. I, me I met him working on a game at. Um, lucas arts like 20 plus oh. years ago that's where he used to work and nice. then they were going to yeah it, it's a long story but he started working for telltale games and i don't think telltale exists anymore if they know they they, they closed down a while back i think because they're the, they made the um walking uh, dead walking dead yeah another yeah. studio had to finish it off yeah that did happen a while back right right um but no he's he's great and uh, but the scripts on that game uh and just any of the the um uh sam and max stuff in general is just they're amazing and the music too my goodness mm -hmm. music is award-winning as well so yeah it's uh it's a fantastic and fun game i i know i'm going over a bunch of these here i was <laughs> what else was i on um blah, blah, blah. oh i you know i did <laughs> the superhero squad show years ago that was oh, very cool fun. yeah yeah I that show <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got to be, uh, I, again, I got to really kind of go off on that one uh, and got to work with, yeah, and meet really uh, for the first time, uh, some of the most incredible talent. My God, I was working with Tom Kenny, for God's sakes. Wow. Tom, one of my wow. best buddies now, and we uh, really formed a great uh, friendship uh, coming off of the, the time we spent there for a couple of seasons. That's great. Uh, but, but Steve Bloom, uh, Charlie Adler, uh, Cree Summer did a number of characters. I just saw her on a re the co starring as a guest role uh, on an episode of uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. She's the, 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 the vampire. She's a vampire trying to. She, she's formed a band of uh anti-vampires they're, they're making them they're turning themselves back into humans by pulling their fangs out with pliers every day Ooh, and doing ah. callous, calisthenics like regular humans <laughs> and turn them into these very generic quote-unquote regular human people uh oh, that doesn't work out well for them 
Yeah. That sounds, so, uh, that sounds extremely painful every morning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's this cult, essentially. Wow. Uh, yeah, and she, she's wonderful in it. Um, uh, Tara Strong was there. Oh, uh, nice. Gray, Gray Delisle. Uh, um, 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 I'm forgetting a whole bunch of people. And, I'm, and we had all kinds of, you know, great... Uh, uh, oh, uh, Travis Winningham. Mm. Uh, he was uh, he was Hulk. Um, I, I did Thor and Thing That's and cool. a variety of other characters. That's pretty cool. Doctor Strange, I think I was as well. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I, 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 you, then. yeah, as you guys can see at home, what I mean, what a what a resume for Mr. Bo. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> This guy, this guy's been around the industry. He's been he's been kicking some ass for a long, long time here, and uh, it's it's impressive to be honest. I mean, I, I mean, as someone who I'm just now starting to kind of get back into the realm of acting, you know, it's it, it gets me it gets me excited. It gets me it, it more inspired to to go out and do things on my own and and to really push myself and really test how far I can go with, with voice acting and, and how many things I can do. So, I mean, it's great. I just, I love hearing things like that. I love hearing those kinds of stories. It's awesome. Oh, oh thanks man. And, and, you know, I forgot one, I can, <clears throat> and it's just one word. I mean, I got to do a few things in it, but I, I, I had the extreme honor to work on ADR sessions for, uh, and this is, this is, this might rankle some Ooh. because I know this is, uh, uh, uh -oh. um, uh, yeah, this is this is <laughs> this pushes a lot of buttons. The Star Wars films, the most recent iterations of Ooh. Star Wars, oh. <laughs> and um, but the first one I worked on was um, uh, um, uh, uh, gosh, oh, now I'm going up on it. Uh, the one that ends uh, 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 really tragically, everybody dies. Oh, uh, uh, Rogue One. Rogue One, yeah, great. I thought it was great film, mm -hmm. uh, and um, it's like, wow, okay, they're serious. I got to the end of it and went, whoa, oh, all yeah. right, that's that story. But when the <laughs> uh, when the um, uh, uh, the climax of the scene is uh, of the movie's coming, and Darth Vader has yeah. made his entrance entrance onto the uh, uh, the ship, uh -huh. and he's co he's coming for the uh, the floppy disk or yeah. whatever that has the plans. Uh, and they're trying to get that through to the escape pod. Yeah, that was a badass and, and scene. And he's chopping everybody up with the red sword. It's really great. And then, you know, the door is closing. They're shutting it off so Vader can't get through. And the guy puts his hand through, gives them the floppy disk. They hand it to another guy. He gives it to, onto the escape pod. Mm -hmm. And then you hear my voice. I'm the, the voice. Uh, it was, again, added later, uh, yelling, launch. You know, oh, that's pulled, cool. Launch! That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's. Uh, I also had a uh, an X wing fighter pilot death scream that I got to do. That was nice. I'm gonna yeah. go back and rewatch that scene now and go. <laughs> I know that guy. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I, you know, and uh, seeing my, seeing my name in the credits of a Star Wars film, I got to do. Oh, that's got to be surreal. I got another three or four after that. The the remainders. Wow. Um, uh, but yeah, I was just you know choked up and just like i couldn't believe it yeah really. i mean that's yeah. that's yeah it's gotta be so yeah so so surreal i mean i i grew up with star wars and you know that's star wars is part of the reason why i'm even doing anything i'm doing today like it with the storytelling of star wars and just you know everything in that universe it, it, it inspired me as a as a kid to go out and tell my own stories and to sure. and to go and do things and become an actor do content creation do a podcast you know it all you can all trace that back to when i was like six or seven years old watching, watching star, star wars. wars for the first time oh you know, I, it's, I, it's I remember amazing. when the first films came out and mm. there was a local it's up in the bay area and of course you know right by uh uh Lucas Ranch mm -hmm. uh, and, and ILM and what have you, just up in Novato. And there was a, um, a Saturday night uh, monster movie broadcast with a host, uh, Bob Wilkins, mm -hmm. uh, a classic, uh, Creature Features, it was called. Cool. And he would bring on all kinds of celebrities and what have you to talk about films or history or what have you. And um, I, uh, he had an interview with George Lucas about the film before the film was released and had clip because I think it was the, it might have been the first time clips were shown 
on television. Wow. He, yeah, he showed he showed some uh, some uh, uh, very short clips and stills and what have you, and talked about the film, and uh, it was astonishing. And then, of course, when it came out, it was just overwhelming. Yeah, you know, I went I went to see it in um, San Jose at the w- 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 Century Twenty One Theaters, one of those wraparound screens like they have oh, here in LA. Cool. Yeah, the Cinerama Dome, that sort of thing. Nice uh, with the, with the uh, um, the bent. Uh, uh, I guess you'd call it a parabolic screen. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And uh, line. Yeah, it was actually right next to the Winchester Mystery House, uh, which I don't know if you know about that. I've heard of it. Look, yeah, yeah. The, the Winchester uh, family of the rifles. Yeah, uh, yeah. And their millions. They had a crazy heir who. Uh, believed that the ghosts of the people that the Winchester rifles killed uh, uh, needed to be appeased. So she kept building on the house just like for no reason. She had a mania about it. So it's this, you know, stairways that lead to nowhere, that sort of thing. <laughs> that, keep, yeah, building, keep building, keep <laughs> uh, building. That's, that's it's interesting. Right at the edge. In fact, there was a film made about it and about, about her, uh, the woman, uh, Mrs. Winchester, we'll call her, um, starring... Um, Oh, who is that amazing actress? Uh, it's oh, it's going to go up uh, with the lovely mane of silver hair. Uh, b- 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 she's done so much great work, and uh, well, I'll have to tell you about it later. But anyways, <laughs> it was not a good film, yeah, but but they made a film about her. They did make a film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, But it was right at the edge of the parking lot. And right, which was right next to the freeway, which is very surreal. It's still there. You can you can take a tour of the Winchester Mystery House. Um, but then, then there was the parking lot, and then there was the Century Twenty One Theater. So you're waiting in this line to get in, and looking at the mystery, the Mystery House, looking at the freeway, looking at the theater. It's just <laughs> eh, all at once. It was quite wow. something. But yeah, just o- overwhelming popularity overnight. Just huge explosion yeah we'd never seen anything like it from the opening shot with the lasers i mean those seem so trivial now yeah <laughs> compared to you know this was 20 oh my god it was 34 years ago when that came out summer of 77 oh yes yeah uh but at the time never seen anything like it oh you know it's like yeah. hearing chuck berry music now for a lot for most people it's like oh that's corny it's like yeah well Take yourself back to when that stuff didn't exist at right, one time, and then yeah. it existed out of nowhere. <laughs> and uh, how radical and incredible and uh, uh, groundbreaking it was! So that's the true. time, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that I think a lot of people can take for granted when it comes to media. I mean, oh lord, we. <laughs> Kyle, I know you and I all the time talk about this on the podcast where people, you know, they, they, they take some things for granted in, in Call of Duty Zombies. Absolutely, yeah. Then it starts this whole spiral of, of negativity and toxicity. But, um, you know, I, I just think, yeah, I think a lot of people need to realize where, where roots come from and where, exactly. and where things, th- things evolve from. And it's a very yeah, important things thing. Things don't start off as that perfect, you know. And even, even going back and looking at some like over films and games and things like that, is you can appreciate it for what it is and you know like wow that's for that time it came out that's impressive you yeah know? yeah and i get again something even like with star wars it's such a big jump you know like oh i, I my, my parents are a big fan of star wars but even they know oh if that movie came out it was like like yeah it, people, was, it people, was everything it, it yeah. changed yeah, exactly it changed the world yeah it definitely yeah. changed in, everything in terms of really. movies and changed that the, well. changed the changed the film industry yeah, oh, exactly yeah it changed the uh the legal end of things and that he got rights to all the yes. uh, all the merchandise i remember that you know it, much in the same way that um uh, bill gates got the rights to uh um uh, was it ibm that he screwed it's like mm-hmm. yeah i want i want all the rights to the software and like Pfft. Sure, whatever, kid. You know, <laughs> it's, like, it's the hardware. That's where the money is. Yeah, we want uh-huh. the machines. Like, no, no, mm-hmm. I, I don't want the software. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was seeing several moves ahead. Oh, yeah. As was, as was Mr. In fact, on the Family Guy parodies of the Star Wars. Which I love are, those which, episodes. Which I are under so the good. auspices of, you know, they got, they got work done by ILM. I could be yeah. mistaken. But, they, yeah, they got, they got rights and privileges. Yep. Um, they sort of they, they go off on a tangent, and, you know, with the, with the scrolling intro on, in one of them about how you know 
hey, you people who have stock in, <laughs> in 20th Century Fox, do you really trust a company that signed away all the uh, merchandising rights to George Lucas? Good grief. What a bunch of suckers. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, George, George, uh, George definitely had a big power play there when it came oh, to yeah. that. I mean, yeah, I'll just take the, uh, I'll just take the, uh, the merchandising. Yeah, that'll do me. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he always, he always sounded to me like a little bit like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> yeah, Kermit the Frog. Yeah. I've never, I've never yeah. seen anyone uh, compare George Lucas to Kermit the Frog. That's it's, uh... it's, it, it's his voice than more than anything. You know, he's got that. Uh, hmm. Sort of a softer quiet, voice, a softer voice, a so softer version of the Kermit the Frog. Yeah, hmm. and I had already, I had already been a, a, a huge fan of uh, THX eleven thirty eight. Mm-hmm. Here we are talking Star Wars on your zombie broadcast. But, <laughs> hey, you know yeah. what? We we sometimes go off on tangents, anyways. You know. Oh, mm. good. <laughs> good, good. You know, we talk, mm-hmm. we we go on tangents about other things sometimes. I mean, well, the... you knowing me, this is this is something that never happens to me. You know, like in class, that would never happen. Oh, never, <laughs> never. Of course not. I would I would constantly have to interject up oh, and catch myself. Like, sorry, ADD, <laughs> ADD. I'm uh, off again. I've got a million stories. Which so. I mean, again, I just gotta give a shout out to voice caster and Dave Boat's class with the uh, uh, in, the introduction to video games and animation. I mean, you learn a lot. You really do learn a lot in this class. You you learn with real examples and with you know the experience of of someone like dave you get to work through scripts together and you get to really really uh, uh learn what it means to encompass uh as something that goes into animation and video games i mean the, some, the scripts that i worked on with with you and your class were just just a ton of fun and just oh, really great, pushing man. Like I said earlier, where with voice acting, I really want to push the boundary of like what I want to do and and keep expanding and keep doing more. And a class yeah, go outside a, the comfort zone. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a class like this is something that will do that for you. So yeah. again, I would Thanks, highly man. recommend it. I'll leave a link to Voicecaster and oh, all great, that man. in the Thanks. description of this video, so that you guys Lovely. can check that out if you guys are uh, aspiring voice actors and you want to take Dave's class. Um, it's on Zoom. It's on Zoom. Yeah. It's. Uh, <laughs> Um, you don't have to live in LA guys. We've covered four continents now. Yes. We've had Africa, um, Australia, Europe, and, uh, of course, North America Mm, all over the U S yeah. That's amazing. I mean, that's, that's, that's cool. You know, getting a lot of international people involved, you know? Yeah. Very talented, very diverse Mm. group. Yeah. You get to make a difference to a lot of people just like that. Don't you? Just yeah. with the power of technology and that we have now, so it's oh, quite... it's incredible. When 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 COVID hit and we had to switch over to Zoom, and I said, "What's Zoom?" <laughs> yeah, as everybody else pretty much did. Uh, yes, uh, it's like I, I I just got used to the uh, 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 what do you call it the uh, uh, iPhone. What's the iPhone version? The uh, um, uh, uh, FaceTime. Um, FaceTime. Mm, I just got yeah. used to try and FaceTime with my dad. I, I walked him through getting that uh, uh, that software on his computer. Uh, uh, but now it's like Zoom. What? what, what? And uh, but no, it's actually expanded because mm-hmm. yeah, you don't have to be in the room. I would prefer I, in the best of all possible worlds, because I, I, I honestly none of us knew exactly how well it would translate right. to the two dimensional realm. But it's great, you know. And and short of having you know a consistent booth and microphone for everybody uh yeah. as we would in, in an in-person class have a booth to go into uh a lot of people are are and more and more people are getting their own home set up mm-hmm. and we talk about that as well in the class yeah, you know, how to how to maximize what you have to record from home because so much of it is done that way now um yeah uh, it's uh, it's worked really really well so it's kind of how i'm used to it now i've been doing it for a year and a half uh, online so yeah yeah Definitely. But I do look forward also to doing some in-person stuff. So. Oh yeah, no, nothing beats going into a, a booth like that. You, you you're walking in the studio, like yeah, it's like yeah. it's like this whole energy, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's no, amazing. it's a different world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just also uh, interpersonally having a room full of people versus yeah, you know, just faces staring back. At, not just, but you know, as opposed to having just the faces looking back at you right mm. yeah i think it's sure. like anything but when you're in a room with people you're a little bit more hyped up you know you're, <laughs> right. you're ready to go you people are watching you, you you know 
the pressure's on that's on, but well, with, uh, you know, Zoom and FaceTime and things like that, it's kind of the same, but not really. It, it, you know, yeah, I, know I, mean. what you, I know what you mean. I know what you yeah. mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's not as much a physical investment. You're not yeah. in the room and yeah. in the presence, <clears throat> and uh, you can excuse yourself very easily. It's like, oh, I'm just going to turn off the the, the camera and uh, you know, uh, go have a snack. <laughs> yeah, you know, it doesn't happen that much. I do give people break time, but no, it's yeah, it's it's different. It's different, uh, and there are some benefits even to it. I think it, it, it people's inhibitions are removed a little bit more when they're not in the room with the other people mm. it's almost like being in your own private little booth at home and yeah. that they can get out of themselves a little more freely if they're just doing it in their closet or their bedroom or wherever they are yeah i feel and, that uh, yeah yeah so it's uh it's a little easier because it, it you know, when once people do go back to going into studios and you step behind a microphone in a booth that is a different feeling and that's one of the things that i really don't have the opportunity to teach and one of the things that i would talk about in class it, w when we would do it in person is mm -hmm. getting used to being in a booth it's a foreign uh, uh uh environment right and and making the microphone your friend don't be intimidated by it and just the more and more you get to go into a booth and feel the 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 way the sound in the room changes and if you're using headphones or not using headphones and you're looking through a pane of glass and you can't hear anything outside there you just hear what's coming from the microphone on the other side of the glass mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a very foreign environment for most folks and it takes some getting used to but you, it's just acclimation the more you do it the more you get used to it and oh, it's yeah. just you know this is what you do that's for sure and it's like it's like with everything that you do you know practice makes perfect right i mean not everything's perfect but practice makes perfect theoretically Pract practice makes better practice makes better that's a good yeah. way of putting it actually yeah practice <laughs> makes better you know keep you keep at it you know learn progress not perfection that's there you go they got uh got the got the good um axiom yeah, there you go. Aphorism. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying words. to think of all the words. I'm trying to think of the vocabulary to use here, and uh, I'm drawing a blank on that. But uh, your vocabulary yeah. uh, broke the. My vocabulation <laughs> is much broken. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I guess uh, one quick thing, one last thing before we sure. end off this episode of the Division Z podcast. Are there any other things that you can tell us are coming up that people can look forward to seeing you in? Swoo. Good <laughs> question. Uh, <laughs> yes. Ooh. Yes. That is it. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, with, with the caveat, um, uh, yeah, NDAs, yeah. they're very serious about those now, especially nowadays. And it's one of those things I would never breach anyways, but now it's like, even auditions uh, uh, for video games or anything oh, else, yeah. animation. It's like, no, you can't even audition until you sign this NDA. Right. You cannot talk about anything. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be out and about and I have some things uh, in the works that'll be released. And awesome. um, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be working with my cousin's daughter who's out here now. Oh, nice. Shout out to Emily Brubaker, very talented. She has 70,000 plus TikTok uh, uh, subscribers. Nice. Uh -huh. um, in any event, she is very well versed in the uh, social media realm and she is uh, getting me into the Instagram. Oh boy! Uh, you know, because uh, I uh, I'm a bit of a not a luddite, but I'm just a, a know nothing when it comes. To, my eyes start to start to blur over a bit. But you know, I would like to make some content and keep people uh, in touch with what's going on voiceover wise and just my general likes and passions in life. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a way to reach out. And I know a lot of other people are doing it in the voiceover realm, and, for and sure. they enjoy it. So yeah, be on, be on the lookout for that. Well, there we go. That's awesome. Well, Yay. once again, I just got to give, you know, my dearest thank you to Dave Boat for taking the time out of his busy schedule to come on the show, have some fun talking about Call of Duty Zombies, have some fun talking about voice acting in general. And um it was just it was just this was a great episode. Absolutely. I really like this. Great having you on. And, oh, great great pleasure. And, Thanks, Kyle. Um, Thanks, Jason. Do you guys have any I guess closing thoughts now that we covered the final question of the day? Do you have any closing thoughts? Closing thoughts. Um, 
The Giants got screwed in game five of the <laughs> National League playoffs. <laughs> I'm still trying to get over that. I live in Los Angeles, but I will never be a Dodger fan. Oh, uh, Yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, that was rough. That was rough. That has nothing to do with voiceover. But just, <laughs> it's, it's been right in the front of my brain for the it's past been, two, been here for a while. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was painful. Just painful. Especially hearing my neighbors go, yay! <laughs> and I'm saying, what the F? <laughs> and throwing off my headphones and stomping out of the room. <laughs> so, yeah, it was controversial. Anyways, shout out to my friends in San Francisco. Go Giants. We'll get them next year. All right. How about you, and for that Kyle? matter, go, go Dodgers and beat the, beat the Atlanta Braves and do us right, because then you can beat the Astros who cheated to beat you Ooh. a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> blah, for blah, me. Blah. Uh, for me, I guess, again, just thank you for coming on, David. It was great having you on, and it was great hearing Samuel again for another time. So, <laughs> always, always a good day when you hear Samuel Sulinger. So, well, I'd like to say it was a pleasure, but that's too many words, and it really wasn't. So, I guess I gotta go. Gotta get some cheese, gotta get some bullets, gotta go look for something to eat. And there you go, everybody. Uh, Sulinger's going to go uh, scavenge. <laughs> great, great way to end things off. But off. it really was a pleasure. Oh, that was man. just Stulinger talking. Yeah. That was amazing. That was awesome. He's a curmudgeon. Well, everybody, Thanks, guys. thank you so much for watching. What was your favorite part of this episode of the podcast? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. And with that said, once again, thanks for watching. And we will see you all next time. Peace out. Bye, everyone. See ya.